Welcome, my friends. We're here with another story chat. I'm Sergio Paez, and we're talking story. And I got another awesome guest here, a good buddy, uh, Chad Pickerel. Hey, Chad, how are you? Thanks for joining us today. So Chad is a uh, well, story artist extraordinaire and and also has a lot to do with uh, what we've been doing in the mentorship group. So, uh, well, anyway, thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> no, not a problem. Glad to be here. So, you know, we met, I think, and well, correct me if I'm wrong. We met uh, back in 2018 in the first go around of the mentorship course. Now, for, for those of you who don't know what that is, I know I've been talking a little bit about it. We're probably going to expand on that in September once the registration comes up. But it's, it's, a, it's a program that we have to mentor young story artists or just people who want to get into the entertainment industry. And it started out with some kind of humble beginnings. But then now I think we've really cranked it up. And this session that we have uh, along with, with Chad's participation uh, has been really, really great. But before I dive into that, I kind of want to introduce everybody to you and also uh, pick your brain about your background and how you got into visual storytelling and just art in general, because I know you're actually multi-talented in a bunch of things. So uh, can you just share with people what your background is and how you got into this whole art scene and entertainment yeah. industry? Yeah, so that's that's a, a definitely a huge long story, but I'll try to, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, what I ended up doing was uh, when I first got into school, I was actually a musician. I started off as a music major, um, trying to write music. I wanted to write music for movies. And um, through a bunch of different things, it ended up not not working out. And I decided I was you know, just going to make make the movie. And so I ended up going, going to school for that. Um, and then during that time, I was trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to do. Um, I had done sound design. I had done cinematography, editing you name it, I've probably had my hands in it uh, at some point in time. And uh, I had also gone back to school for graphic design and artwork uh, through that. And from there, I was like, you know what? Storyboarding, let's do that. So I jumped into storyboarding and haven't looked back since. It's, it's just been a blast. Awesome. And I know you, I know you were a musician. You told me that before. And actually I've heard some of the stuff that you produce, which is great. You're, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> but you also have like a graphic design background, right? You did a lot of um, kind of graphic work and, and did some of that before, right? Was that yeah. easier to like kind of make the transition because you had that foundation? I, yeah, I think so. In some senses it was. Um, drawing skill wise, no. Uh, because a lot of graphic design work doesn't usually tailor to to the drawing skills, but um, when it comes to composition, shot layout, leading your eye through the uh, um, through the image and stuff like that, so that way you're showing mm -hmm. the image that you showing the information that you want in the way that you want. Right. The design background definitely definitely helped. Right on. That's so awesome. And so then when we met, I think. Uh, it was during the mentorship, the first mentorship session. And I remember a lot of the sequences that you did were super creative and really fun. And you're, you're also the type of person that I think, you know, just, just to let people know that I think it's important to be a well-rounded artist and person in general, like you have a lot of like street smarts, if, if I should say, like you got business skills and also just a wherewithal of like production sense, you know? And so like an example would be, that not only are you doing the sequence, you're actually creating the artwork, but you, you have a context of how that fits into the production, which I think is really valuable that maybe some people might miss. Is that is that something that you gained from your you know working experience or where does that come I, from? I would say that's something I've gained through my working experience. Um, I've had a lot of different times where those, those things have had to come into play. Uh, for example, when I was doing cinematography, it was on a feature. Like I got to be a, a, a second AC for uh, for a feature film, um, and it was the the production was all over the place, right? So we had to try and be as efficient as possible in our camera department, and so I learned a lot of things about how to go to go through and deal with these kinds of situations that you wouldn't normally come up that wouldn't normally come up or yes. you wouldn't expect to. And from there, I continue to build on that and be like, these are the kinds of things I want to do and how I want to, to approach it. And 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I think it's super important because one of the things that I've no, well, I guess we all know if we work in production is how intense it can get the high, the, the high volume, the pace that just intensity level and, and you need to be able to keep up really. You need to have like your wits about you, so to speak, or the problem solving needs to happen. And like, that's, that's why I tell people you can never turn your brain off when you're doing <laughs> any kind of artwork or, or just visual storytelling, because you have to be thinking about the solution all the time. So that that's really cool that you have those skills. And I think they're really important to just even identify. But uh, let me ask you another question about now that you've gone from, let's say, transitioning into visual storytelling, how has it been since like since we first met and doing some exercises and building the portfolio? I know you also came to the first round of the Lightbox Expo, which uh, we're having now the third session of Lightbox. And of course, we're a proud sponsor and that's coming up. Chad is helping us with some of that on the background as well. But uh, you were there hustling and talking to companies and you, you've been through that kind of uh, gauntlet of chasing down work. <laughs> so right. what's that like? And, and what's that professional experience now uh, <laughs> it's, uh, look for you? It's tough. Like the, the doing doing the, the, the grind is is always going to be, I think, one of the most difficult things. Like once you're in there and you're and you're working on stuff, for me, that's the easy stuff, right? I love I love doing that, largely because when you're doing that, you're just, you know, you're conversing, you're talking story, you're you know, talking all this stuff, and that's really comfortable. But once when you're trying to get in there, that's the difficult thing because people aren't necessarily sure about what you're capable of or or things like that. So you have to find ways to showcase your personality out there, and it's not easy to do, but uh, when you when you get that job or when you get that call, it's it's it feels pretty cool. Nice, and and you have some cool ways that I noticed that you, we've talked about how you're promoting yourself and like and now we're doing some some of the streams that you're doing on Twitch. Is it that you're you're doing these uh, yeah, streaming events on on Twitch? Yeah, um, I I stream every Mondays and Fridays on on Twitch, and. Yeah, most right. of it, it's it's mostly art stream. So I sit there, I'll storyboard, I'll talk to the people that I'm. Um, I'm gonna bring up your link listening. on screen so yeah. people can can follow. All right, cool. And yeah, it's 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 a lot of it's just chill and draw. You know, you we get to chat, we get to converse. You can ask me questions about things if you want. I'm totally totally down for that. And you know, we just have fun. Um, and a lot of the streams I do, I'll be like, hey what do what do you want me to draw and we end up coming with an up with an idea together and i draw out the idea the last one was somebody wanted me to draw like somebody getting angry like because they lost a video game and so we turned that into a single panel story of a guy who's like going ah ripping his keyboard apart <laughs> and all this stuff and you just see the screen says game over right and those are the kinds of things that that i do on there and uh, it's really kind of one of the ways of the future. So if you're, if, if you're not on Twitch or you're not streaming your work, uh, it's, it's a great avenue, especially once you get to certain areas where if you get a developed fan base, they can end up helping support you beyond just the normal, hey, you know, we love your work. You know, they can subscribe to you. They can uh, follow your work even more. Uh, you can build a Patreon, all these other avenues are now available that allow you to do things that you weren't able to do even five years ago. Right. Yeah. That's kind of the theme that we've been doing this month with having some guests on and talking about promotion. Like how are you finding work and what are you doing uh, to just get yourself out there? And that was something I didn't really understand when I first got into this industry, but now I'm, you know, with, as years go by, I realize how important it is to have your website have some kind of promotion and now to do to take advantage of these tools that we have like right now we're streaming to people and we got you know questions and stuff going already so we'll get to you guys too so hang out if you have any questions and stuff you want to uh, ask chad or ask myself we'll, we'll talk about story and figure out what we want to you know focus on but the, the promotion part and just putting yourself out there you got to be brave got to have kind of a thick skin in a way and uh, but i think it's so necessary if you really want to have success or traction in the industry because I mean, how else is somebody going to find you, right? There's no like, you know, back in the day, I guess there was small rosters or lists that people had, insider lists that people had of, let's say, story artists or production artists, uh, union lists maybe. But now, you know, it's, it's a global market. So 
what are some of the things other than like uh, like the stuff that we just mentioned? Is there anything else you would recommend for people to do to you know get some kind of traction out there? Get on LinkedIn. Get on Instagram. Um, there are so many times where people will be looking for um, for artists through Instagram, through LinkedIn, through Twitter, all the social media platforms. Facebook, not quite as much uh, nowadays, but um, those big three other three because mm -hmm. um you know everybody looks to instagram for art i know people who have gotten contacted from studios because they saw their instagram feed or because they saw them posting on linkedin all the recruiters are on linkedin so you can go and connect with them there and build and build a rapport but even beyond just that when you're doing those you don't want to like if you're trying to connect with people on linkedin don't make it out like you're doing it just for the the connection to get the job mm -hmm. you want to build a relationship with these people so that way when they when they come to you they know who they're they're getting in in return instead of somebody that's just like right. oh i want to be used it's somebody <laughs> that oh they want to they want to form a connection i and you know essentially become like unofficial friends, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Honestly. Or have a, yeah, like a profession, like you, you want to work with people that I feel uh, that you can connect with and that they're, they're not going to be, uh, you know, uh, how do you call it? They're not gonna be poisonous to the production, right? Sometimes you have attitudes that you may not gel exactly with the people there. And it makes a lot of sense to find people that not only have the good art skills and can do the work, but can also fit in with the team. So that's Absolutely. super, I think what you're saying is so key. Like you, you don't want to be a stalker, right? Online, <laughs> but you also have to be professional and show off like what you can do and, and, and what your, what your skills are that could add to that a particular project or production. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you just, you just never know where things are going to come from. Um, you can make a connection with somebody, not hear anything back from them for six years and then suddenly uh, an opportunity arises from them. Um, yeah. I had an opportunity that almost happened because of that. Like I had that feature film I talked about earlier had actually one of the people I worked with floated my name or had worked with somebody else who then saw me through social media, saw I was a story artist and then hit me up and asked me about, um, the potential for collaboration and we had a phone conversation or whatever in the end it didn't pan out but the fact that like it was 11 years later that, wow. that had happened so cool. you never know what <laughs> connections are gonna, are gonna yeah happen. that's that's really great so the, okay they, they gave a recommendation and then the person looked you up basically right and then connected with you yeah. through whatever <laughs> channels you had there I don't even think they gave me the recommendation. They just had worked with the other person. Ah, okay. The other person was looking for somebody. They knew that the person that I had worked with had had a community of people and a collection of people found me through the so, through his social media stuff and then contacted me and said, "Hey, we're we we may want to do do stuff." Right. And yeah, and so it was just yeah, it was eleven years later. It completely blew me. <laughs> oh, <my> total surprise <laughs> yeah great that's awesome so one of the things i wanted to ask you about and pick your brain is uh what we've been doing in the mentorship because this time around in 2000 in, uh, 2020 we decided to relaunch this mentorship program which is again this training that we we did for artists now i set up the lessons and kind of the the curriculum for the program and since you had already gone through it we had stayed in touch and at that point we're like well uh you know, I was I was like, well, why don't you come on and, and join the crew? Now you've become not only the moderator, but also a mentor to other people in the program. And we have like a private discord server that we use for those that are there. Nick Sung is another uh, kind of guest presenter that we had this year who's been a, a tremendous help. Uh, he's ex Pixar and just worked on all kinds of really cool projects. And I think leading the group also there is like some really amazing talent that that is in the group and some real cool positive energy there. So I wanted to get your take uh, of what you what you think the mentorship uh, is, is actually useful for, for somebody who wants to get into visual storytelling. Is this something that could, and, and I, you know, I say this uh, 
with almost just curiosity because I, I've been out of the college scene for a long time. So our intention is to really, you know, help people uh, get the resources they need to be good artists. But how does this compare to other things that are out there with, with storytelling? I think it's great. Um, like one of the big differences that I, I have had from, from taking other, other coursework is the fact that it's not just the fact that it's a year long because it is a year long. So you're, you're constantly getting new, new information. Um, but it's, it's the actual fact that we have these live reviews that go, that go every couple of weeks. So you are co constantly directly interfacing with, you know, Sergio and Nick in, in, in the case of this previous ment or the mentorship we're doing right now. Yeah. Right. But then on top of that, what we did with this one was we created a discord group where everybody can have direct live interface with each other, do workshops, do all these, these things and network in a completely unique way, rather than just the, you know, Facebook group and be like, okay, yes. we have the Facebook group or whatever. But we have all of these elements where you're constantly able to direct directly talk to each other. Um, and I think that, that to me has been one of the, the most beneficial things about this mentorship and a big upgrade from the original one that we had. Because yeah. the original one we had, Discord wasn't quite what it is now. Yeah, it wasn't even that. Uh, I, I don't know how developed it was back in the day uh, in 2018. We were just using Facebook to kind of communicate, which is limited in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and like, we're, we're seeing that not just with the mentorship, but like Lightbox has a huge discord server and yes. they do all sorts of stuff through there and things that are connected with clubhouse or, you know, all these other, other things that we're doing. Yeah. We have and, to, we haven't even exploited that to its maximum yeah. potential, right? We have to <laughs> get on yeah. it. To... Absolutely. Well, there's definitely a lot of things that we want to do with the discord and we'll, we'll start doing, um, but the first thing was we knew we needed to open up a Discord channel. Yeah. And so the last the last month or you know, a couple of months ago, we did. We got it open and everybody has been coming in. We've had people talking back and forth with each other. Yeah, that's the public it's Discord that great. you're talking about. That's Let's the public the, one. The link yeah. to that one and uh, and get people to sign up there. Uh, well, I don't have it handy, but I, I did want to, um, uh, yeah, just say like, it, it kind of happened organically, right? This whole, when you're talking about like just workshops and people studying, there's, there's film groups that have developed from inside the, the, the users there. I know people do kind of online figure drawing and film studies and uh, what just, and it all happened organically. I, I couldn't even, yeah. make, there's no way I could have planned any of this stuff or our team could have done this without just having the, the group mind of, like-minded artists coming together and actually making this thing. You know, yeah. Real. And, and th absolutely. That's exactly what happened. Like it was like when we set up the discord for the mentorship, it was just, Hey, here's a place that you guys can post feedback. So you guys get feedback from each other, you know, cause there are people, cause the other thing about the mentorship is it's a wide range of skill sets. We have people that are brand new coming in and people that have been in the industry. And um, so Having the ability to with the, with the Discord has allowed like you know new, the newer people to learn from those other more experienced people on top of the regular mentors that we we have, and then all of a sudden they were like, "Hey, I want to do a gesture core. I want to do a gesture thing where we just we all get together. Who's in? Oh, I want to do a story thing. Who's in? And yeah. next thing we know, they have they have them like every day. You know, I I look in there and there's people that are doing something and it's it's awesome yeah we have users from all over the world every country is almost represented there and uh and every time zone it's super awesome and actually hey big shout out to joe check this out uh, he, he put a message here joe is also one of our uh previous mentorship uh participants and he, he gave us a nice compliment here the variety of modules are so great because it spans a wide variety of aspects of storyboarding that only come from experienced pros all right thanks joe good to see you buddy uh yeah and you know we, we try and throw things out there so that you, the, the, the focus of this group is, is really to just improve your portfolio and have something that you can show and, and get traction, get jobs, talk to people, hopefully even land a studio gig. And a lot of, you know, a couple, handful of, of previous students have done that. 
And I know a bunch that are in the program right now are just, they're rock stars. They're going to be great. So they're really going to kill it uh, right. once, once they put their stuff out there. I, I think it's more than just the portfolio. Yes, the portfolio is there and you have the ability to do that. But like there's some modules that have nothing to do with the portfolio that we do or that talk about things that don't get talked about enough. Things like business or um and and how the, and, those yeah, like money and are. rates and contracts yeah. like i never had that when i was coming up and i really wish there was some kind of forum for it yeah like we have and and we have in our live reviews built in discussion time so the way our reviews typically work is you know the the our mentor sergio nick will will review the um a, a few of the of the of the assignments that have come in from people and then like at the end we do like half an hour discussion just talking about different things within the industry and questions that come up and so that way we're able to get the biggest grasp and understanding of things that you wouldn't normally be able to get just by watching a regular video or whatever that yes. extra context and it's it's great <laughs> to be able to do that yeah, that networking aspect to me, even to me, is just mind blowing how how valuable that really is. So let me ask you a couple of things about what well, we're we're going to be participating in the Lightbox Expo, which as you know, this week is announced that you know tickets are on sale. So I highly encourage anybody who's interested in art to go check that out. We're of course sponsoring some of those uh, talks and events that we're doing, all story related and story specific. Chad is going to be part of that too. So Chad is now helping us uh, design this and the event and really bringing it together. Uh, but have you seen some of the stuff that's on there? And then, you know, I think you know about some of the talks that we have lined up. Uh, like, what are some of the things that that you think people should do when they come to like an industry event like this? Um, so the first thing I think people people should do, it's a little harder right now. Uh, but when, when it goes, if should it go back live for like next year? Like one of the things is just be prepared. It, it, you know, have a, have a portfolio ready if you want to do that, but start conversations. It's really the big, the big thing. Go in, talk to people and just, just learn, learn from them and just, just have a conversation with people. Mm -hmm. Does not, not all the conversations have to be about my portfolio or whatever, but some of them, you know, some of them just have to be about just learning about the other person. Right. Uh, and, and this is important too, especially like when you do get back to the lives and you're talking to people at the booths, because those people see people that go, that shove their portfolio in their face, go mm -hmm. review my portfolio, review my portfolio. Right. Um, so it's a breath of fresh air when somebody comes up and goes, Hey, how is everything going? Da, da, da. Love the work that you're doing. I want to learn more about you. You know, those kinds of things that goes a long way. Um, and the same thing goes in it, when we're doing the online, if you're doing Lightbox, hop on the Lightbox Discord and start conversations with people and just get to know each other because that's how you build those conversations, those things. And yes. I've, uh, I, I still keep in contact with, the, with a lot of people that I've met, whether it's at Lightbox, whether it's at CTN or whatever. I still talk to somebody that I had met at CTN three years ago and we, we talk daily. Yes. And that's just something that happened organically because it wasn't necessarily about just, you know, here's my work, but it was about forming a relationship, which goes back to the original thing is you want yes. it to feel like a natural organic relationship and not just like, oh, I'm using you for something else. Yeah, right. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. How awesome. Uh, and there's a couple of questions here. I wanted to mention too, um, you're going to be back for the next mentorship session. We're going to be talking a little bit about that, right? And uh, and we have actually an amazing lineup. Uh, we're not going to reveal it just yet because we're still confirming everybody. But just know that registration will be opening up soon in September. And if you want more information, of course, hit us up, connect with us on social media. Chad and myself are going to be there and we're going to be moderating the group uh, along with a couple of other pro, uh, pro mentors that uh, we're now expanding the lineup, which is, which is wonderful. So uh, check that out if you want to do it. So I, I wanted to ask you too, because one of the things that I, I like to think of is that this in general as a career and just as a learning experience, I think of it as a marathon and not a sprint in the sense that you have to think long-term and that if you have a career that you think can span like 30 years, which something like art and design can, you can do entertainment industry, like we 
it's not like your, your back is going to go out necessarily. I mean, I guess, you know, your, your drawing hand could, could go bad or whatever, but that we're able to physically keep working until, you know, until our old age. So what's next for you in your career journey? What, what are you, what are you doing now that, uh, that could, you know, is pushing you forward and what kinds of things are you looking forward to doing in the future? Um, yeah. So one of the things that I'm working on doing is, is related to the Twitch stream as I'm working on building that up. Cause I want to be able to create, create a stream that has people that want to come. They want to see the work. They want to talk, converse and just, you know, talk, talk about story, talk about art or whatever. Right. Yes. And then at the same time, utilize that and as well as other stuff to continue to build independent projects. Um, I have a whole slew that I want to do, but I want to, you know, take it one step at a time, build a community use, and then that community can help and we can all work together to, to continue to produce great stuff. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's where I'm trying to head right now is, is in that direction. And uh, it's gonna, it's a long road. As you said, it is a marathon, not a sprint. So um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun though. That's so awesome, so valuable. I just you know to be able to connect with somebody who has experience and expertise uh, in whatever field, and you know we're talking about art and design and storytelling in particular, but that accessibility didn't exist before. And so the fact that you're doing these like Twitch chats and and the, these connections and storytelling stuff is so so cool. So keep that up, man. I think it's great. Uh, how about we take some of these questions that are coming up? Yeah. I wanted to bring this up here. Uh, this one's pretty cool here from, from JCO0348 uh, saying here, I am now overwhelmed. I hope to work, but I procrastinate and get distracted every time by Twitter, Instagram, and ArtStation. Where to begin? What kind of advice would you give uh, a user like this or an artist who, uh -huh. who feels this overwhelm with like, you know, you yeah. get on Instagram, right? And it's like, thousands of amazing artists are just bombarding you. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> the, the first thing, the first thing that I, that I do is I, I separate myself from everybody, what everybody else is doing in the sense that, you know, yes, all that stuff is amazing, but it's not me, right? Yeah. Their stuff may be, may be great, but I have my own unique style. I have my own unique spin to things, right? That helps me know that, I have a place to be able to, to share without thinking that I, you know, that I'm just the worst in the world because all these, all these other people are better than me because it's not necessarily, they're not better than you. They just have their own style and way of working, working yeah. to things. Yeah. They may, you know, sometimes have more mechanical stuff that they have learned over a course of time that you yeah. will get to, but that's, you know, the, the mentality you kind of want to take is just like, that's the stuff they got. Let me show you what I'm capable of and what my cool stuff is. And then take out your sketchbook. You know, you have your sketches in there. If you're drawing in, in the morning or whatever, take a quick picture, toss it up on Inst on Instagram or something, right? Just start getting the work out there because, you know, doing stuff like that helps with your confidence and it helps with you just doing things. So that's, it's, it's, it's a tough balance for sure. But if you just get out there and, and do it, it yeah. starts to become more natural. And, and you, and at one point it starts, it'll end up becoming a habit. You'll be like, I need to post something. And yeah, that's great fun. advice. I think, you know, maybe some of the procrastination comes in because it can feel like it's, it's work and it's like, oh, painful to do it. But if you kind of design a system where you're promoting yourself and connecting with others and make it part of your routine, like you're saying, I think it, it just gets so much easier if you're doing it. Right. And uh, that's, that's how I handled the Twitch when I started the tw my Twitch is that okay. I'm like, I'm already drawing, right? I'm already doing my storyboards or, or whatever, right? My yeah. personal work. Well, why not start a Twitch, right? I might as well turn it on and say, I'm going to do it from this time to this time. I'm going to be working on stuff anyways. So why not? Right. And that allows me to just naturally integrate it into what I'm already doing. I'm not going out of my way to build stuff. It's just doing what I'm already doing, but now I have a camera on me. Exactly. 
That's your, that's wonderful. That what a great advice. Yeah, you're integrating that into your your daily daily routine. Cool. Let's go down the list here. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this, but I want to bring up as many questions as I can. This one's a fun one from Irving eight hundred eight. Hey, buddy, good to see you in the mentorship, but haven't started the first month. I feel more. This is kind of a similar question that we had <laughs> from before from uh, our previous. Um, user here feel demoralized and ashamed no buddy you don't have to i want to do it of course would be insulting if i would it be insulting if i start now i should have done a full mentorship no man here's a couple of things that i would say and then i want to get chad's reaction here too because we're both in in this program and, and we're, we're in it deep with the rest of the crew there is uh, one you get lifetime access to any of this material so if you ever have to go back to the lessons and stuff just go fire it up it'll always be there and then you also get lifetime access to the insider group that is actually, I think, just what we've been talking about. The key value here is that you have a crew of people of other talented and like-minded story artists that you can lean on for uh, getting feedback and, and getting that stuff done. So, yeah, I, I think there's, there's always time to do this. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's that's the big thing about the mentorship and and the extension to to Discord um, is that even when it's over, because you have access to it, you can still work on things and still continue to improve. And then with the Discord now, you still have a place to go to be like, hey, here's my stuff. I would love feedback. And there's people there to be able to go. Yeah, let's here's here's stuff. Here's here's what you could do to learn or whatever. And then you can take that and go, you know what? I liked that idea. I maybe I want to jump on that. Or, or it gets you to think of things in a different way. Um, beyond just posting on Facebook or something and hoping that somebody uh responds to it. This is these right. are places with that dedicated area to be able to do. So definitely, you know, jump on in and keep 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 on going. Yeah, it's about it's about your portfolio, right? It's about just getting, you know, it doesn't matter if you're part of the group as long as you do the work and you're you're getting traction. That I think is is really the important thing. Absolutely, and we all have things that cause us to not get in at a time frame or whatever, right? Those things uh -huh. will definitely definitely happen, and it happens to the best of us. So, yeah, you know, there's the support's always going to be there when you're ready to make the jump into the into the next into your the next part of your mentorship for your next part of your career. Cool. Yeah. Here's one. This is a great uh, compliment to see from Facebook user. The name is not coming up because of the Facebook feed, but it says great to see you guys. Thanks for hosting. Love the weekly live cast. All right, buddy. That's awesome. Thanks for the compliment. Let me pull up this one from Steven Muller. In my experience, nothing is as effective as a personal endorsement from somebody in a supervisory uh, supervisory role, supervising position. He corrected himself in the next comment. Um, in a previous employment situation or somebody with a real clout in the industry. So yeah, that personal endorsement is really so strong, right? That's kind of what we've been talking about that when you get that recommendation from somebody who's already working on a, on a job and say, yeah, I know this guy, he, you know, I've worked with him before. That person is really good. That personal recommendation is so powerful, right? Wouldn't you agree? I, I do. I do agree. Um, to an extent, like I, I, I agree in terms of like having that recommendation that gets the eyes looking at you is absolutely um, invaluable, right? It's always great to have that. Yeah. But when push comes to shove, whether you have the recommendation or not, if the work doesn't match what they want or, you know, stylistically, or it's not up to the par that they, that, that they're looking for, whether you have the recommendation or not, you still won't get the, the position it'll, it'll still go to somebody else yes. and so that's that always comes back to you always want to keep working on things keep keep pushing the grind so that way we they or that way you you are able to enhance your skills so that when that recommendation comes in they go you're right this is the guy this is the person we want yeah very yeah very true Awesome. Well, we're, we're like pushing here now over half an hour. I, Chad, thank you for joining us on this one. How, what can, let, let's, let's end this on, on what you think um, is, is a best way for, or, or I, you know, there's probably no one way of doing this, but like, what are some of the tips that you would give somebody who's actually coming into becoming a visual storyteller and entertainment in general, it doesn't necessarily have to be a storyboard artist, but what, what, did, what general advice would you give uh, for people to succeed at, at this? Yeah, um, the, the big thing is 
go all in in what in what you're doing. Um, learn what you can about it, every, every aspect that you can, whether it's cinematography, whether it's music, whether it's you know, storyboarding, any anything. Um, you want to just you want to go all in with it and be like, yeah, this is what I want to what I want to do and what I want to what I want to be. I would also recommend creating small goals over the large goals, right? So you have your large um, your large goal, like say in this case, we'll, we'll say I want to work for Pixar, right? That's the large goal, right? But that's really broad, right? That's your 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 forest. So now you want to create smaller, more attainable goals that will allow you to be able to reach that bigger goal, whether it's, I want to improve my gestures. And even in that, how do I want to improve my gestures? I want to improve my gestures by doing this, this, and this. And then you focus on those small goals, which then in turn improve your gestures, which then in turn make your other work better, which gets you recognized by Pixar. And then eventually, boom, you get you may get the job yeah. right and and that's how you really want to you want to do it because working for pixar is great but it's really overwhelming when you're like how do i do it unless you set the smaller goals that end up ballooning up to that right now oh, that's so great awesome chad this is so cool to have you on this where can people find you let me see if i'm going to bring up that twitch uh that, that Twitch link here so people can follow you at least there. Anywhere else that uh, you would recommend people check out your work yeah, and, and you can follow find me there on Instagram, uh, Shadow Jacked. If you guys have, uh, or YouTube, I don't do as much on YouTube yet. Uh, that's another thing I'm going to be incorporating into, into my routine as well. Um, and that's Shadow Jack Studios. Um, if you guys have seen me on Facebook, it's Shadow Jacked is in, in these chats in the past. That, that's me. Um, and then, yeah, with Instagram, it's also Shadow Jack. You can find me on, uh, definitely on the Storyboard Art Discord channel. I'm always looking and looking at that and chatting it up wherever, yeah. wherever people ask Yeah, you can definitely find chat on Storyboard Art, which is great. We're glad to have you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's so, cool. Yeah. Right on, brother. Thank you, my friend. And hang out. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna end this show here, but hang out for me, and we'll 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 talk a little bit after the live feed ends. And thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Good luck with all your projects. Talk to you soon. Bye. Take care.